Peter and Yuchi here, and I have been associated with them for more than two years, and we have launched a right view lab for them, and it is going good, and we are growing, and we are quite excited on that journey. And I'm joined by Shiva, my co-host, uh, VK. Uh, you are taking over the baton from me. Go ahead and welcome them. And we will have a special episode for our Stop Now audience, as well as for our Right View Lab members, for our premium members like you. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, JK. <laughs> Hi, Thank you, JK. Yes. Yeah, we can start like I'm Shiva, like, yeah, this is my uh, first thing. Hi, yeah. Yeah, we can go with the topic, like, uh, if JK want to continue with, or... Uh... Uh, yes, Mita and Yuchi, uh, the first question to you guys, right? So, uh, we are not close friends, right? We are strangers, and I, I see everybody as strangers in my life. Uh, yeah. So uh, the concept of uh, meeting with someone and having that pleasantness and sharing uh, some commonalities or sharing our viewpoints and enjoying to work together, right? So that's what like I see uh, the beauty of like what the message you are sending to others, right? Just like a counselors or therapist and uh, trying to help people what is more needed in their life and how uh, again. I, I am against it, but not in a sense like I'm against it because for me, religion has done so much damage to the individuals and it has hijacked their mind. That is why like I'm against it. And that is the reason why uh, I don't even want to use the word spirituality. But you guys often use that, right? The spiritual path. So tell me about it, right? How was your experience uh, uh, traveling together uh, on this YouTube channel journey, right, you lab. Very good. So, okay, maybe I can go first. Yeah, spiritual journey, I think it's very important for us. I totally agree with you, JK, that uh, a lot of forms of religions, they have numbed the sense of uh, thinking in people <clears throat> so that people can blind blindly follow something. Um yeah, but you know, also at the same time, I think I mentioned this in the previous panel too, that it comes from a deep need that we all humans have. If I talk about myself personally, you know, I experienced a war when I lived in Iran, war with Iraq, people were getting killed uh, day in, day out. And uh, then I immigrated to the USA and everything was so different. I was challenged again, learn everything from zero. So, you know, sometimes you reach a very breaking point in life. You suffer so much. It's like you become so confused at what is right and what is wrong, especially I think maybe in your 20s, perhaps. Some people, they have midlife crisis. Um, but you feel like, is this really worth my time? <laughs> I mean, life itself. You have the fundamental questions about life that why do we even live life when there is so much hatred? You know, in your preview, I saw like slavery, yeah, racism. Do you know how much it hurts when some other people look down upon you just because of how you look or how you speak? So you feel no love in the world and you hit the rock bottom. So what makes you get up in the morning? <laughs> you know, so for me personally, that's what spiritual journey is about. Um, it's not about blindly following something. It's about having that hope that there is a way. Buddha teaches four noble truths, that the first noble truth, life is hard, life is suffering. And then there is the third noble truth, which is the point of, cessation of suffering will uh, will will occur so that's how i see the spiritual journey and uh, once we presented this material on our channel thanks to you and your team members you know and also on meetup thanks to the meetup so a lot of uh, like-minded friends gathered who think in this way yeah isn't it overrated everything that like society is trying to sell us Oh, you don't need to do this. You have to do this. You do this. You know, it's all overrated. So 
So then what do we rely on in life? <laughs> and if you rely only on yourself, you're like, okay, I don't want anything. I'm going to be very independent. Think like Osho, you know, be independent. Then kind of life becomes lonely too if we cut off people out of our lives thinking that, you know, they might have their own agendas or whatever. Life becomes very lonely. We don't grow. That's not fun either. So that's how I see the spiritual journey is a community of like-minded friends who also see life the way it is. You just live, suffer, and die, and you have some pleasures along the way. <laughs> That's not enough for some of us. We, we demand more out of life, but we need also some kind of guidance because with our own limited wisdom as a human being, we don't see any way out of it. Yeah, that's how I see the spiritual journey as. When I think about the concepts of spirituality, in when we are in good time, I don't think majority of people need such thing as spirituality. They can get along very well, happily, joyfully. Um, but life in our lives, we have to we have a lot of ups and downs. Sometimes we will hit the rock bottom. Uh, especially recently, I'm following the news, news of uh, wildfire in Maui Island. It happened almost 10 days ago. People are suffering and suddenly they lost their houses, workplaces, and uh, assets and everything. And on top of that, many people lost their lives and the people were so devastated. And then one congresswoman, or mm, I think she's an ex-congress uh, person, she her remark uh, resonated with me so much because in the long interview, she just mentioned her own spirituality by saying uh, through this natural disaster, she had to realize the, uh, how short human lives are. And uh, again, she realized how important to seek out the purpose of our life. And it is really important for all people to, to be of service to other people while we are still alive. She, she was not a polit just an ordinary politician, but she, she's also a surfer. <laughs> Uh, I think many surfers are very spiritual. So there are so many things they have to do politically and economically, and uh, they're in survival mode. But on top of that, when we are confronted with uh, such disaster, naturally we, we have to think uh, how temporary, how ephemeral human lives are, what's the meaning? We have, we are compelled to think about it so deeply. I think everybody has this strong urge to think about the meaning of life in, in deep down. So this is what spirituality means for me. Well, that was a, a good introduction by Yuchi and Vita. Again, we are going to uh, dive deep into our social problems, uh, combining that, how it relates to the spiritual one. I would say like Shiva to lead the conversation and also ask more questions because I have my own uh, not belief, my way of thinking and uh, how I interpret various things that is uh, being told by uh, spiritual gurus or philosophers, everybody combined together, right? For me, like everything that is borrowed from others, 
I myself like trying to find out what is the right thing. The struggle is always for everyone. I don't know whether it is there for everyone. But the topic that we chose was like the reason is most of the domestic violence and abuse, uh, uh, sexual uh, abuse or uh, sex trafficking, labor trafficking, I understand it is a whole different ballgame, but human trafficking as such uh, happens because of these misunderstandings, right? So the importance of marriage and sex, I wanted uh, that topic to be taken up. And you guys are the special guest here now. And uh, we are trying to get consent not to have sex here. <laughs> it is prohibited in YouTube channel. I'm trying to be funny, but it's not funny. It's just a joke. Uh, but tell me, Yuchi, uh, sex has been a problem for humans from the day of evolution. That's how I see it. Uh, because uh, there is so much talk about like uh, bisexual, homosexual, heterosexual and in the public domain we cannot talk about it and also people who are spiritually inclined I am taking that word, the reason is the common man has a different opinion if you are a spiritual guru you cannot think of sex sex is prohibited in all, almost, right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. In many religions, it is viewed as something like you are committing a sin unless you are entering into a marriage. So what is that like marriage makes it so special and provides you the entitlement of sex? Is there any connection? I'm asking too many questions. You guys have to say like, stop now. JK, stop now. <laughs> I'm going to listen to you guys. Go ahead. Me first? <laughs> okay. Uh, mm, yeah, you're right. I, I, I haven't did done my research all the relig religion in the world. So I, I just, my knowledge about religion is kind of limited, but I know a lot about Buddhism and uh, major religion. So in Buddhism too, in early stage of the history, uh, sex is sex has been and sex was prohibited, uh, especially for Buddhist monks and uh, practitioners and uh, Buddha's disciples. Mm, yeah, it's a considered sin. Um, it is partly because it's human desire. Mm. <clears throat> Buddha said human beings have five desires. Uh, desire, yeah, the, there are three basic ones. Desire for food, desire for sleep, and desire for sex. So those are very um, primitive desires because all animals have this. And in addition to these three, uh, we have desire for money and the desire for recognition. I don't know if animals have desire for money, <laughs> but uh, I know many squirrels store their food in the ground. <laughs> Maybe that's desire for money. And of course, animals want recognition. So basically, all living beings have those five desires. And among the three basic ones, I think the desire for sex is very strong. Although it's not life and death problem, we, living beings can survive without having sex. sex. Mm. But without eating and sleeping, it's difficult to survive. So in that sense, mm, sex is not as strong as the desire for food, but it's still really, really strong. Mm. So why many religion it's prohibited? Because um, first of all, we get astray from 
our spiritual path. And first and second, uh, we become too obsessed. We uh, <laughs> commit more and more bad deeds because of this. Yeah. When we, yeah, I, I think everybody knows the strong uh, driving force of human desire. Uh, so I have to say all the crimes in the world, not all the crime, many crimes in the world uh, caused by desire for sex or desire for money. And of course, all the desires are involved, but especially because this desire is strong, uh, yeah, sex trafficking or sexual assault, abuse. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I also know that if we prohibit to, to fulfilling such human basic desire, uh, all the more those desire uh, explode. Mm. So suppressing the desire is not such a good idea. So I, I, I learned that, yeah, in Japan, my home country, uh, people can satisfy the desire for sex uh, uh, by going to such uh, certain places. <laughs> it's not completely illegal. I think, you know, without that kind of uh, resort, I mean, last resort, I think more and more people will commit uh, sexual crimes. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I think India is very strict about about it. So maybe somebody said, <laughs> oh, maybe I didn't need to mention the name <laughs> country. Uh, in many countries, they are too strict. So there will be more such crimes. Mm. So I think it's important to to acknowledge the, the, the strong power of desire, we need to have a little more self-compassion. And anyway, satisfying desire is not a purpose of our lives. So uh, um, great masters of Buddhism say that is uh, having sex or get ma getting married is a part of our lifestyle and it's up to the individual we are all free uh, it doesn't matter too much in japan there will be there will be not there there are not so many strict uh, rules about marriage or cooking or whatever or regarding our lifestyle compared with some religion. Uh, so that's part of compassion, I think. We need a lot of compassion. Uh, in the United States, there are so many rules that restrict human freedom. Uh, I don't think it's really compassionate. Uh, so at least uh, in Buddhism, there'll be there there are not much too much too many rules about our lifestyle. Okay, maybe <laughs> I have to stop here, and uh, I want to hear. Yeah, and does I have a lot of doubts on it? Like because all the spiritual uh, journey and other kind of things is all only for a man or a woman because. I don't think 90% uh, of religion or in the all spiritual world, it's all depend on the men because men always think about sex and spirituality and most uh, other sex trafficking it's in the world is happening only depend on the men. And 99% of 
uh, men only thinking about all the spirituality, uh, maybe all the religion in uh, maybe in Jesus and uh, Islam and maybe a lot of uh, Hindu, Buddha. They are all men. Why human does not have this kind of thing? And uh, maybe the restriction, all the restriction, all the religion have restricted about sex and marriage and all other things only because of men is more involved on uh, journey and spiritual or thinking of God and hiding something from the world or to control women or what, why it happening only for men, not for women. Is it any day on this? Yeah, my comment is all about men. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> So uh, it's really difficult to put myself in women's shoes. So let's hear from Vida. Yeah, I need answer from Vida. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Maybe I didn't get the essence of the question, but maybe if I say, you know, for women, because uh, they can become mothers. So once you're a mother, I mean, the love, between a mother and a child is so strong, it's considered like the strongest love you can, and the purest love you can ever find among humans. So I think women are dedicating themselves to their children and making sure their children find happiness. So as a result throughout history, they haven't been vocal about what their own needs are or what they want you know, to be, and also, they were not given power. I mean, even in America, it's only recently, maybe 100 years or so, that women had the, they had to fight for the right to vote. Many countries, they're way behind uh, in that. So it's, I think, yeah, so men, physically, men have had power uh, until now, <laughs> physically. So it's just the human evil uh, intentions, you know, desires can be evil in that sense, because whoever has more strength or power tries to dominate the weaker ones. Throughout history, it has always been like that. Even in one family, you know, couples always try to dominate each other, you know, let's do it this way. No, let's do it that way. It's always a power struggle, which I saw this as I mean, I know Americans don't like the word evil, but when I was growing up, I felt like darkness or just it's not wholesome to me that you have to always be struggling for power. But there are also these enlightened beings like the Buddha who just they are so present that they just accept you as you are and let you be. So there is this alternative form of love and compassion, too but it takes a lot of wisdom and enlightenment together. So I don't know if I answered your question or, uh, yeah. Yes, maybe like uh, the topic which uh, JK have uh, chosen, marriage and uh, sex. And what the point as a woman, what do you think about sex and marriage life? I don't think because men always think about sex. And I, I, in my point, women won't think about more in sex than men. That's why the topic is always a spiritual topic. When uh, when we go on the path on spiritual, we want to restrict the sex and other things. It's think of men, not for women. What you are doing? Like why we get married and have sex? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, you know, for women, it's more about companionship or like friendship and uh, yeah, to have like that sense of camaraderie. And also if there are children, so raising children, it's always about the happiness of children. But if you don't have children, like I don't have kids myself. So um, yeah, I think it's about feeling loved and then being able to love someone. But when it comes, um, so your question is more like, why we need to have marriage? <laughs> yes. Yeah. With a man and a woman. Like uh, if you are a woman, why you need to get a man for a marriage? All right. 
oh. if you are only comfort with the uh, comfort zone or love and other things love can uh, can be get by more th than men another woman can give you more love than a man right men can only give a sex and uh, have a, a rebirth or uh, something why we get married then oh yeah so i think in the previous q and a session rick kind of responded to this question which is a so this is a social contract just to fulfill uh especially men's needs for sex so there is this contract of marriage to bring some order uh order to society because i think without marriage <laughs> if it's like all open uh desires are boundless according to the buddha and you know for us we study buddhism desires are boundless and also no matter how many of our desires we fulfill we're never going to be satisfied like this is i mean it's so clear for me we can have discussion about it if you don't believe so um so that's why if there is no marriage i mean even with marriage there are extra uh what do you call it marital affair uh there are affairs and then it brings so much ruin to the families so i think what i really understood from buddhism and i'm so grateful about my understanding that brought me so much wisdom and comfort in life is that marriage is not the purpose of life yeah that's not our purpose of life um marriage is just uh one choice among many other choices people make the purpose of life is find our inner strength for men and women each human being has to find that inner source of joyfulness and strength and wisdom that's the purpose however in order to get to that purpose we have to live life <laughs> and there's a journey to get there we have to live life and buddha teaches that actually life is very lonely he says in the sutra we are born alone we die alone um alone we come alone we go so i think because life is so lonely and we are raised with our family usually parents or some siblings so in that i mean even then we feel some loneliness because maybe siblings don't understand us our parents don't understand us so naturally there is this constant desire to find someone who understands your innermost core and i think this is understanding our life's purpose which many people mistake it with finding their soulmate <laughs> this is an illusion it's not true yeah for some people it might become true but i think for most people i mean just look at the divorce rate is so high it doesn't work uh so marriage is just something like a social contract and it i think it serves some purpose because as you mentioned men if they have all these sexual desires all the time so they need some outlet and you know if they can't if we, like humans are not like bees they just jump from one flower to the next because women have jealousy much stronger than men perhaps and there will be a lot of uh, conflict and a lot more killings and hatefulness and vindictiveness i mean just look at history right uh, those kings who had many wives even now in some cultures it's allowed so it just doesn't work so it's just a practical means of keeping people together so for now just don't get too wild and violent but don't mistake that as your life's purpose it's just like giving people some little like helping them find a little home or shelter shelter to live in but don't find too much comfort there because that's not your life's purpose to have be in this comfort zone having a roof over your head that's not the purpose it's just a basic need so we can think about what happiness really means to me in my heart or what is peace of mind to me so that's how i see it okay just another question for ichi like uh, then why all the religion uh, restrict the sex towards spiritual journey 
Yeah, I don't know about other religion, but in terms of Buddhism, um, I think it's because it's it's a too much uh, distraction for the spiritual spiritual journey. Uh, because the pleasure is so big, <laughs> people are easily distracted. Uh, especially when Buddhist monks engage in practice, hard practices, it needs such a strong concentration. So even for us, ordinary people uh, try to do meditation, it's really difficult if you are really serious. Our mind keeps jumping around and it doesn't settle down. In this way, uh, we cannot follow uh, very strong hard practices of Buddhism. Uh, I mean, for those uh, Buddhist uh, Buddhas, I mean Buddha's disciple and uh, Buddhist monks. Uh, lay people are a little different, but in the past, it was considered like this. Uh, so they try to eliminate all the distractions. So sex was one of them. And then eating meat was another factor. And also, mm, yeah, any pleasures of desire can be distraction. So I think that was the reason. Yeah. So it's a, it's a really, I think it's a noble act, uh, actually. Mm. You know, the more we indulge ourselves in such pleasure, uh, we become a little corrupt, I don't know. We, you know, it's against human mind, you know, really human mind should be serene and calm, like a full moon in the night sky. But being indulgent in worldly pleasure is kind of opposite state of mind. It's okay for, for, for us, it's, it's part of our life, Mm. But the ultimate goal is enlightenment. So they try to follow Buddha's, Buddha's path, Buddha's way. Uh, mm, I don't know if it, it made sense. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, from, from yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, Yuchi, again, I, I've known you for quite some time now, and I expected the same answer. I have to politely disagree to what you said, right? The reason why I say that is, uh, again, uh, beautiful flower, Vita. So you brought that up, like to remind that, like our life is impermanent, right? You have been saying it over and over and over. <laughs> and I got fed up like in the meetups, like, what is this, right? Uh, we all know that we are going to die and it is impermanent, right? So to your concept of Buddhism or Buddha's teaching, right? Not to get attached. And for me, all those things are uh, stories, right? Because if you don't procreate, if you try to be celibate monk, you are trying to create a division. You are against life. How is that agreeable? Because if nobody gets married, nobody has sex, then human civilization doesn't exist. We will die, right? So there is a contradiction over there. Like, let's observe this closely. Let's watch together, right? Unless we procreate, unless we have sex, humans will not have existed for so many centuries, right? So why are we taking that stand saying that like not having sex is what will provide you detachment? The more you try to attach to something, you will 
get repelled like for example i am so worried about so many other things even people who are beautifully in love are getting entangled into marriage right so love is the mm-hmm. most beautiful thing right to love everybody else and to be in a serene and peaceful environment is what we all aspire for but the moment you bring in this social construct social concept like uh a forced marriage right you have to be again we cannot women are more superior in sex than men that's why men has this jealousy how to control the women because women were not provided so many opportunities and wealth in those days and to keep them in check and balance they cultivated that jealousy like my husband or my partner has to take care of me for my rest of my life my child and that's how the family unit has bonded and we created that it's a fictional thing and i agree upon i love the buddha's teaching but running away from his wife and kid how fair is that let's be honest right so he didn't deny it. like i don't think it's all made up at a later stage by the buddhist monks and the followers and the cult as such become a religion made things up which buddha has not taught he was trying to seek enlightenment and find out what is his purpose in life and he has to in those days has to go away from to try those things let's not confuse that right if you are going to confuse that and say like oh i don't have to i have to forcefully deny sex to achieve enlightenment i don't think that is possible correct me if i'm wrong i love to be wrong <laughs> <laughs> maybe this time bita wants to speak up <laughs> yeah so your understanding actually is not correct jk uh yeah so maybe buddhism has two schools i think what you are referring to is referring to the theravada school of buddhism monastic life you have to become a monk or a nun and you have to be celibate no marriage that's i think what you're referring to and i totally agree with you that was not buddha's true intention uh because buddha's compassion is all encompassing it's all pervading it's for everyone there are no discriminations in buddhism however Buddha needed to guide people little by little to deeper forms of truth which is absolute freedom and it's called the world of no hindrance that's very deep people wouldn't get it you know people who can't even like control their desires even to a little bit you know they couldn't follow the teachings of the buddha so he established these rules or phases they are phases it you don't need to stay there forever so initial phase in the sutras buddha's teachings is because of our desires we do uh create unwholesome karma like you know if i'm constantly thinking about money or i want to expand my possessions and assets just for the sake of it at the expense of taking it from others forcefully instead of you know thinking about benefit of everybody so in buddhism mahayana is the other school of buddhism mahayana school of buddhism so enlightenment is not something you have to seek in isolation from society you you know go to the mountain side remain celibate and do your practices that's not what buddha truly intended for it's for everyone so enlightenment is for everyone and the spiritual journey is i benefit myself by benefiting other people so in mahayana buddhism uh, and especially pure land shin buddhism you which you talked about this very well in the last q and a session about the life of master shinran so shinran is s h i n r a n he founded the pure land school of buddhism and if you remember you which did mention that he is the first buddhist monk he lived 800 years ago in japan the first buddhist monk who got married and actually yeah who got married publicly 
in order to clarify that real Buddhism is for everyone, even people who want to get married or want to be with someone and who want to have sex and procreate, contribute to the population of uh, humans on this earth. So I think if you pay attention that there are two schools of Buddhism and we are not following Theravada Buddhism, the one that you mentioned, uh, we believe we can practice Buddhism um, in everyday life. Now, if you feel getting married helps you listen to Buddhism and practice more, getting married is good. If you're like, oh, I don't want to deal with people. I can barely manage my own <laughs> stuff. You can remain single and listen to the Dharma and seek the path. That's good for you. So there is no prescription for whether you have to get married or not, whether you have to have sex or not. So these things are not life's purpose. It's the means of living. And for some people, it makes them feel good and comfortable and settled. And some people know. So you have to make the choice at an individual level. That's how Pure Land Shin Buddhism uh, teaches this so um, which is it's not that Shinran created this new form of Buddhism we believe that that's what Buddha really had in mind but he he couldn't just say it people couldn't understand it so he had to prepare people's mind in phases so initial phase was that you know you need to watch out what you're doing you're bringing a lot of pain and suffering to women like you know if there were some men who were womanizers or something you need to watch out Watch out for that snake, for that poison, you know. So that was the initial phase. And then gradually, there was that deeper wisdom to understand that, um, yeah, enlightenment is possible for everyone. Yeah. And in Japan, you know, even mothers, parents, they listen to Buddhism. There is, like, we have a little daycare center for their children to come and, you know, some babysitters will watch so parents can listen. It's all about constantly empowering ourselves, regardless of the background we come from. Well, I, uh, I understand and I uh, appreciate that uh, difference, uh, Bita. So uh, when it comes to religion, right? So all the religions, right? Whether it is, uh, I'm just trying to think through that. Even with the uh, celibate monk or even with the Hindus, uh, the yogis and gurus going to mountains and uh, being a celibate, forcing themselves, right? Uh, even Buddhist monks, right? As you guys mentioned, right? Just like uh, two denominations, like in, even in Christianity, so many denominations are there. And that's where we hear like uh, priests abusing uh, children, women, and sexual abuse, all those perversions arises out of these things. Why we are not able to solve those things? Because those are hiding behind uh, closed doors, trying to be good people and exploiting it. And even most people are very uncomfortable to talk about homosexuality. And the worst part now we have reached in uh, the Western society is like the rights of LGBTQs. And they are like caught up in this world of even men getting married to men, women getting married to women. What kind of nonsense is that, right? So all these things happen because of the age-old problem of denying sex and being like uh, a monk or choosing a lifestyle. Don't you think, don't you agree on that? Like that was the past karma of our human civilization all together right because we are all together though we try to find as an individual purpose the whole consciousness is a one thing right i'm not making up anything right or anything that i'm speaking talking all these words i'm saying it is a borrowed one it is not mine it's not original it has been told by somebody else so it's a collective consciousness that is responsible for this struggle. That's how I see it. Don't you guys think that? So, you know, I don't think necessarily it's because we have been denied uh, the rights. I mean, to some extent, yes. Uh, it's more 
deeper than that you know these desires are like a fabric of who we are an integral part of who we are and i agree with you that denying those desires it will backfire so i agree with you but you know for let's say for homosexuals now they can marry that's i think it going back to the social contract because imagine you know even in nature there are there is love between same sex you know animals so but for humans they couldn't get married for many years and when one of them had to die because of cancer or some disease so the other one was left out like without any financial support that was not fair to them so it's just they amended the law to provide inclusion uh for them so i don't see anything wrong with that and i'm yeah I don't see anything wrong with that because so many of homosexuals were suffering when their partner died. So if marriage is because two people love each other and then socially we need to acknowledge that just for the legality of it, for the you know estate planning inheritance, just for that purpose. Yeah. But mm -hmm. but I agree with you. Anything you deny that's part of us, it's like a volcano, right? So if you put a cover on it, you know, it's like bubbling up, bubbling up, and you you put the lid on top of a volcano, you know, push it in. There is so much you can do. It's just physics. It's just the energy. It will backfire and it will explode. And I agree. Yeah, I agree. Actually, same thing is happening in Iran right now because, uh, yeah, they say that men and women, they should not be together unless they are officially married. And the younger generation, they don't buy that anymore. So there is a lot of rebel rebellion against the government. Unfortunately, many of them getting killed. So yeah, you cannot deny humans' <laughs> desires. So it's a double-edged sword because there will be a lot of suffering because of desires. So ideally, people learn to control their own desires, or at least listening to Buddhism helps them understand that's not the purpose, it's the means. It's not the destination, it's the journey. So they don't put too much value on these desires, so they don't go overboard, they don't get carried away. I think that's the danger. But each person has to manage it individually with the wisdom they gain through the dharma absolutely again uh we can go on and on and uh, let's be mindful of our time as well you see what you have to say like we are not pro or against so just like what beta said right so are we allowing homosexuality was it allowed <laughs> uh, in the buddhist monks culture or even like uh, in any religion right so for example the priests who were indulging in, in those activities, is it allowed and do we uh, allow that or do we take a stand like, no, that is wrong? What do you have to say? Uh, in my personal opinion, uh, homosexuality is part of a uh, human evolution. So I don't, I, I don't think there's such fixed idea of just two gender, like a man and woman. Uh, so, you know, it's a per, uh, reality of impermanence. Everything is changing. You know, our gender might be changing little by little. So we need to accept it and adapt to it. And then we have to modify the laws and then we need to change our common sense. Yeah, it's, yeah, evolution, I think. Mm -hmm. So, so is, maybe, is that okay. like a uh, uh, sorry to interrupt? So, is uh, there a danger in that? Because I see a lot of videos being made, like, and people are saying there is a propaganda by uh, some people to force the kids to uh, be like homosexuals, right? Just because of this LGBTQ, right? Uh, because mm. when, as a child, right, when they grow, they want to explore their sexuality, they want to know their puberty, right? How to because it is most of the society, right? Uh, as uh, Bita was mentioning, right? Uh, Islamic countries or uh, Middle East countries 
or even in Indian context, right? So uh, many people prohibit sex before marriage. That's why I combined the marriage and sex. And I, uh, they think that like having sex before marriage is considered to be a sin. And even mm. just like uh, after marriage also, right? Sex itself is considered as a sin. If two consulting adults, whether they are married or not, if they are happy to have an intercourse, right? It's a bodily pressure they are sharing. Why is that has to be like a, a adultery or all those concepts we bring in and say like extramarital affairs? So many things we confuse, right? Why can't we live simply, right? That is my point. And also the question is, are we forcing our kids to uh, just because we have to support LGBTQ or uh, other uh, homosexuals? Are we not feeding in them to be like uh, homosexuals? Oh, sorry, I didn't hear <laughs> the last sentence. What, what did you say? No, are we not promoting that uh, homosexuality oh. by, by saying like it's okay Right, uh, uh, because as a kid, right? So when they are in uh, 12, 13 or 15 years, 16 years, they are still learning, right? Still, yeah. we have even set up a social contract. Only by 18, you are an adult and you can be free from your parents, right? Most of the society, we do that. So when that is the case, they are secretly already exploring their sexual body parts and they want to know and they are attached to their friends. And as Beta was mentioning, right? In some, some societies, they cannot have opposite sex as the friends. And obviously, they are not even uh, allowed to have uh, sex. So when you say like homosexuality is okay, then the problem is the kids itself will get entangled with the friends and explore the sex and say like, okay, I am an homosexual without even knowing that like what is their sexuality. That's a real problem, right? Are we creating one huge problem for the future? Hmm. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> it's a problem. Yeah, I, I know. I agree. Um... That's why we should ban. That's why we should ban. Again, <laughs> simply, right? Uh, many people, even in cultures, they don't want to talk about the uh, word itself, sex itself. That's why I see like they use the word love. If I say I love you, everybody appreciates. Oh, this person is fond of me, right? Love is a more acceptable word. But if I say like I want to have sex, then that becomes a huge problem. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> And that's a good one, Yuji, right? You're just uh, <laughs> escaping it by saying like, yes, I agree. I'm done with you. <laughs> Let's move on with a different topic. Again, uh, Peter and Yuji, it's been a pleasure. We have uh, so much more to talk about it. Probably you can organize that topics of discussion with our uh, meetup groups and other things. And Shiva, you have the final word before we wrap up for today. <laughs> Uh, on your final uh, the, 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 the question or something like uh, I want to ask any one of you like it's all about age factor because uh, you're talking about things like uh, when you want to jump in in the path of spirituality you may be completed like 40 plus or 50 plus to enter in the path or is there any aging for a spiritual world. Anyone? Like, do we have an age requirement to start yes. a spiritual journey? Yes. Oh, so, you know, for me personally, I uh, even before I found Buddhism, I was very spiritual, meaning I was thinking about why people have to get married, just like what you guys are saying, why they have to bring kids to this world, parents don't understand what life is all about and then they bring children <laughs> add to their suffering and then all these problems are happening out of ignorance so for me i think that's the start of my spiritual journey without any system or any religion just with between myself and the universe you know the truth of the universe 
uh, I would say for me, like even when I was six, seven, eight years old, but I don't think there is any requirement. If anyone who comes to us, if they're really serious to learn, we will teach them. But of course, we will test their understanding, you know, like if a 10 year old comes to us, are they serious or they just want to, you know, have games or, you know, things like that. I don't think there is an age requirement. Yeah. And, you know, that's why we have all these problems, like what JK just asked, you know, this propaganda or whatever. I think it's all because of ignorance, because parents don't do enough contemplation anymore. Like, you know, our parents, grandparents, I think they thought a lot about life and death. These days, they don't think about the truth of life and death. So parents are lost. So the children are lost. So they're like, oh, maybe if I become this way, I will be happier or that way. So I, I would love for all parents to read. You know, our teacher even says, if a parent doesn't read like hundreds of books in a year, maybe they don't have qualification to be parents. Maybe that's why I'm not a parent. I was not reading that many books in one year. Uh, yeah. So we have responsibility to educate our children. That's the initial spiritual journey, but parents' wisdom is limited. Like Einstein says, you cannot solve a problem from the same level of consciousness that creates that problem. So we need that community work. And I also do believe ch raising children is a work of a village. The more people are involved, the more well-rounded the child becomes, exposing to different wisdom. But being as a parent, we have to be mindful because there are predators, sexual predators out there. So we have to protect our children. Yeah, until they know better for themselves. Did I answer your question? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, Bita, you are right on that because uh, more exposure is needed. We can continue to uh, explore this topic as well. And uh, Yuji, your final comments and thoughts. <laughs> um, I think for Yuji, one sec, like, uh, sorry for the, you can answer my final, another question, like, because when we grown up, uh, our parents and our society is saying us to run behind the financial fulfillment. So we end up with the age, because I'm talking about the age, we end up with the fulfillment of our financial needs up to the age of 40 or 40 plus, we complete our financial needs. And the, st the starting point for a spiritual journey to ending all the financial needs, and that's why I'm asking what, is there any age limit to fulfill the society needs and the material life and the spiritual path? Is there any... You can go yeah, ahead. I mean, uh, he, he is trying to make that connection, right? Because Yuchi, you, you, hopefully you will agree. Beta also mentioned that. So mm -hmm. we are uh, gender fluid. We are open. You can be male or female or in between. Or uh, we don't have to identify, right? So that is what spirituality means. Uh, but when it comes to age factor, right? Uh, it is not accepted in many cultures when a young kid goes into the spiritual path, right? The connection is like they are distancing themselves from the financial needs and they are leaving everything behind what the society expects them. To what Shiva mentions is, when we are running in this rat race as an adult uh, till the age of 40 or having that midlife crisis uh, from the Western point of view, we uh, have to be successful financially, uh, independent to support your family Otherwise, you become a failure, right? And then you cannot say like, I am in the spiritual path. So where do we start this journey and how do we connect it and how do we resolve these problems? It's a huge question. Probably, uh, Yuji, you can address. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, in a sense, everybody is uh, already in a survival mode. <laughs> In just to surviving is uh, already a great task for everybody. And in addition to that, seeking spiritual path can be really, really difficult. 
Yeah. So, but that doesn't mean uh, it's impossible. Uh, we can start incrementally, just little by little. Uh, just 10 minutes meditation is okay. And then little by little, we can increase our practices. Um, actually, we have a lot of spare time in one day. So we can be more and more effective, uh, productive with our own self-improvement. Yeah, so we don't belong to monastery. We just seek spiritual path while uh, having work, having family, and then having a lot of other, many other uh, tasks, tasks. So there's a lot of hope. Well, with that beautiful thought, again, Bita, if you have something to add, or Shiva, yeah. please. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Jackie. I was just gonna add very briefly that the spirit of Mahayana Buddhism is benefiting myself by benefiting other people. So if we always remember that in mind, which is win-win situation, even if you are bombarded with work in the corporate cultures, uh, the rat race, as JK said, we are there, but we can be that light to invite people around us who only see money and power as their purpose to benefit ourselves by benefiting others. That means cultivating more harmony and compassion and understanding. So that's your practice. That's the practice. The more we engage in this benefiting myself by benefiting others um, mindset, you can see that beautiful happiness that's available to all of us. Even if we are in that rat race, little by little, we find that purity in our heart and we invite people around us to engage in that light and spread of that light. Yeah. Wonderful. Again, uh, it's a, a great conversation. Thank you, Bita, and thank you, Yuchi. And uh, once again, uh, Shiva, welcome. Yeah. Oh, Hopefully yeah. you will carry forward the torch and uh, be the host. And I am signing off for today. Thank you all for watching us. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you, JK. Thank you. Thank you.